good morning and welcome to the Christian Indie Writers Podcast, where we inform, encourage, and support Christian indie writers on their journey for publication. I'm Jennifer Carl Tong, and I write historical Christian romance. I'm Christina Katane, and I write Christian fantasy. I'm Jamie Hirschberger. I write short fiction under the pen name J.R. Nichols. Oh, Rhonda, you have Rhonda. No volume. I'm Rhonda Hagerman, and I write <laughs> fiction and nonfiction nice. under the pen name D.D. Bowman. <laughs> Woo, what a morning we've <laughs> I had know. already. Oh, golly. I'm so glad that worked. Thanks for tuning in to, for all of you that are here with us live. And a big thank you also to our listeners on iTunes, on Google Podcasts, and everywhere else and other platforms where we make our audio available. YouTubers, if you like what you you see here, please do remember to like and subscribe. You can also go over to our website and subscribe to our newsletter, which will help you ensure that you will never miss a single episode of the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. So every episode, we like to start off with our segment that we call our What's Up. So this is where we share what's going on in our personal and professional lives. And <laughs> that's and what I was doing at the beginning. If you guys saw me looking down, I'm like, I'm going to do my now. I always forget. Always. Right. Um, so we're going to not start with Tina since she's trying to mute herself. Let's start with you, Rhonda. What is up with you today? Okay. Well, the weather's been horrible this week, so I haven't done any gardening. So I've done a lot of stuff in the writing world. So I am um, still doing some editing. I'm doing a little bit of beta reading and um, that's just going to be my life for a little while. I am um, still working on getting my social media. There we go. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. Uh, so still working on social media and um, that's pretty much it for me. All right, great. We got Piper in the chat. Good morning, Piper. Teresa Thomas. Good morning, Teresa. Good morning, Gigi. We love all having all you guys here to chat with us. All right, Tina, how about you? What's well, I'm you? still working on, uh, I got like nine scenes left in my that's manuscript exciting. to have the rough draft done. I'm, it's kind of slowing down a bit because there's like this transition from primitive culture to um, not modern, but less primitive, I guess. Um, and so the, I keep having to stop and look things up, like what would be realistic? You know, would they have trucks? Would they not have trucks? You know, so stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that's what's going on. That's exciting though. And if you if you follow my um, Facebook group, um, Christina Katane VIP Readers, when I, when I uh, research something interesting, I've been posting it in there. So if you're interested in that. Very cool. Piper says her what's up, working on writing, going to be working on an editing project with another author. Hmm. Exciting. All right, so my what's up is um, today's my birthday. <gasps> Happy well, birthday. What's up? Feeling <laughs> old, old, old today. And um, yeah, that's it. You so. should. I I'm you scared are. to talk. Is my is my volume better? I'm scared to talk. There's a little bit of an echo. I don't know what's going on. Am I but echoing too? I no. don't know. Let me. So anyway, happy birthday! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And then I guess I should also say that um, in six days, book three releases. So that's also Woo! what's up. That's really kind of everything that's happening in the background right now. So. That's not even a week. I know. Next Thursday. Thank you, Piper. Whoops. Thank you, Teresa. Thank you, Gigi. Really appreciate all the happy birthday wishes. All right. Um, Jamie, what's up with you? Okay. So my what's up this week is a show and tell. Um, okay. I went to a barn sale with my husband and one man's trash is another man's treasure, of oh, course. Boy. Um, yeah, I'm famous for this, but for 75 cents, how could I say no? Um, it was like a do it yourself assembly situation and I had to take it home right away and show my kids and put it together. So here's what it is. Dun, 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 dun. Oh. <laughs> So it's if you awesome. look, if you look really close, there's little sheepy who on the top, like the shepherd boy. And then down there are people coming to do whatever the gifts for the baby Jesus. And there's a little Mary in the manger and everything. And then when you light the candles, the whole thing spins around like a whirly gig. Right. So what's funny. These are. Oh, oh, Jamie, she just muted. So it's like fun okay. to put together. Right. Uh -huh. So that was like totally a win for like a homeschooling mom and the heat, you know, making it like we had this whole big science. It was so fun. Okay. But the hilarious part 
is how fast this thing spins when <laughs> it's like everything's gonna go pewing off of there pew, pew, pew. and it was like hilarious <laughs> to think of them all holding on for dear life so anyway i had a lot of fun with this thing for 75 cents and i just wanted to share it all with you guys yeah, I think that's awesome. I can't believe that was only 75 cents. I yeah. know. So anyway, it was like so fun of a day for so cheap. So way to embrace your German heritage. I'm <laughs> proud of you. Wunderbar. <laughs> yeah, we talked about all kinds of stuff because, you know, you lit it and you almost want to turn off all the lights and have it be snowing outside because it just no. gives you a cozy Christmas feeling to have it going until it starts spinning maniacally and you think you're going to kill everybody. <laughs> You're like, oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree. You know, everything suddenly turns to terror and destruction, you know? You could put little ninja stars on the ends if you had, like, all, and not invite all your enemies <laughs> over. I seriously want you to light it now because I want to see how fast. Because, like, in my mind, it goes slowly, like, right? And so and it is, this is a Christmas thing, right? Yeah, this is maybe. Not, yeah. yeah, maybe what I'll do is I'll light it and then I'll put a video on our YouTube channel for anybody who cares. And then it'll just be some random video of this thing going. So uh, let's see <laughs> if I get ambitious this week. But um, thanks for sharing this with me, guys, because I knew you would appreciate the story. Yeah, I absolutely appreciate that. That's so fun. All right. Well, that was a really fast what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we've ever gotten through our what's ups that quickly. That's amazing. But maybe we need that extra time because today, ladies and gentlemen, we are discussing characters. Mm. And specifically, we are talking about getting to know your characters. Now, <clears throat> why? The, why do we need to get to know our characters? Now, it's one of those things that, like, you, I know I've mentioned before that I saw an interview with one of my idols, Jeanette Oak. And the thing that she, people were asking her all kinds of questions about her books or whatever. But they somebody asked her a question and she got super serious. And she said, because characters matter. And that always stuck with me. Mm. So why do characters matter, ladies? Uh, first of all, to me, if a book is character driven... I get into it. If it's plot driven, it doesn't mean so much to me. But why? Yeah. Is that? Because I get personally involved in the story, in the lives of the characters. Okay. Anyone else? I have a scientific explanation. Oh, of course. Really? Yes. <laughs> Shocker. Um, there's something that happens in a reader's brain when they are reading and they connect with a character. They, you know, the, functional MRI I told you about that shows writers writing and their brains glowing. They've yes. done those functional MRIs on readers. Oh. And what happens is if they're writing a, if the character that they've connected to in the story is riding a bike, the part of their brain that they would light up when they're riding a bike would light up. Wow. Um, if the, if there was an emotional scene, the emotion center, of the reader would light up on the MRI. And see, this is where I'm really weirded out by the power we have as writers creating this stuff in people's minds. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so Lena, in those character tests, actually is the, these things that they're reading about your main character actually happening to them. That's how it feels like to the reader when they can really connect to a character. Mm -hmm. Now, you said something similar on the writer's um, MRI. So is there any correlation between how the writer, when they're writing about riding a bike and the reader reading about a bike, the exact same areas? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. That's really exciting. So I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro since I wrote about it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome. I you can claim that. I could get one of those marathon stickers and put it on the back of my car <laughs> if I write about someone winning the Boston Marathon. Yep. <laughs> That's funny. I don't have anything scientific. I just know that when I read a book that I don't enjoy or that I'm like, Ugh, and I cannot finish, mm -hmm. you know, DNF, then um, it's because I, when I really look at it, it's because I didn't care about the characters. So somebody has written a book. And maybe it had a great plot. Maybe there was exciting things happening and it might have been a good storyline, but the characters were not likable or like, why do I care that this person, mm -hmm. was, oh, all of a sudden they're crying. Well, I'm not crying with them, right? Mm -hmm. So because the character wasn't developed enough to where I got to that point that Tina is talking about, where in my brain, like I was emotional with them because, it, so it's very important. Yeah, it makes sense to me because... 
Um, if you don't know somebody very well, say someone's standing in line at the grocery store, you probably, for example, don't care what his birthday is. But your child, you memorize your child's birthday. Why? Because you know your child, you're intimate with your child, you care what happens to your child. And unless you make the reader feel like that about your character, why would they care what your character's birthday is, for example? Right. So writing good characters is very, very important. And like what Jamie said is because, you know, if you don't care about them, well, how do you get to a point where you can write a character that's like that. The first thing you have to do is you have to know your characters. Would you ladies agree? You have to really get to know your characters. Yes, absolutely. How do we do that? What are some of those techniques that you guys use? Um, I have an idea. Right. One thing that I use is character worksheets. And um, when I first started writing my first nano, uh, I didn't know about character. I didn't know about anything. I just thought I could just sit and write or whatever. And then in my second one, I had found out about character worksheets and some other worksheets for, I just love worksheets to be honest. <laughs> um, and so I, you can find worksheets out there um, that are so detailed, you know, everything about your character inside it out. You have no question about uh, what they're going to do in this next scene. So I filled out 500. It's got like horoscopes and like their favorite yeah. color and, you know, who was their childhood best friend. All that stuff is not necessary. It was just busy work to keep me um, procrastinating, which is oh, that's a good what point. I wanted to be doing. Yeah. 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 So, um, what I do now is, okay, there's this book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so we do two pages. We make sure we know who our character types are. Um, this is specifically for hero's journey, but really it works for all. Let books. me pause you for the people who are only listening. Would you yes. please say what book you're holding up? Uh, this book is called plot your novel. <laughs> it's a workbook to help you finish your novel by Dee Dee Bowman. She's a brilliant, brilliant author. <laughs> great resources for shameless self promotion. My husband is president of the fan club. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, so the character types we want to know if they're the protagonist, antagonist, and all that. So that's very important. But then on our character worksheet, that is all we have. These are all the categories we have. And then nice. as we go back through and edit, a little bit, we'll think, well, do we need to know what his, um, you know, soccer coach's name was when he was in second grade? Then we'll figure that out then. But we have the basics to start with and then start writing because procrastination is my enemy. Mm. All right, good. It's good to know that about yourself. Jen, Um, I, when we were doing the outline, I hadn't thought of my character development tip. So can I share it now? Because I would love to I'm remembering it. Yeah. Well, what I've realized is if I write dialogue with my character that I want to get to know and any other person, it could be me, it could be a person who I already know in real life. Um, sometimes it's a gold mine, and I can pick one of my other characters and really get to know both of them during the conversation. But usually if they talk to each other about anything, I learn all kinds of stuff. Someone likes to use bis quick instead. Of, and you kind of learn if they're surly, you kind of learn, do they get grumpy when they're around other people or do they put on a nice face? Um, that's the kind of stuff that I think really builds the character realistically and translates into your internal dialogue. Because a lot of times I read a lot of narrative writing, so-and-so picked up the tape measure. Well, I don't know if so-and-so is picking up the tape measure because he's ticked off or if so-and-so is picking up the tape measure because he's going to do a magic trick with it. And if I don't know the character well enough to know his intentions with that measuring tape, then it's not interesting to read that he's going to pick it up. Right. I think my method is a little bit closer to yours than it is to Rhonda's. I don't do worksheet type things, though. I do when I'm developing a story, I do what ifs, like what if they did this and what if they do that? And mm. that helps me to really figure out who my characters are in a lot of ways. Uh, the next step after that is I, I really have to figure out what has hurt them, like which because whatever has hurt my character is what's going to keep them from coming together. The two. Right. So like what is oh, what has yeah, hurt them in the romance. past? Yeah. yeah. What has hurt them in the past and what like. So that really kind of helps me know who the, who the character is. But then I also like to go deeper. Like I have to like kind of know like how, like one of the things that I hate is that when I'm reading a book and a character reacts in a way that I'm like, there is no way this character would react that way. And I don't like that in my books either. So um, what I do is I kind of like, I don't, I know that there's different personality metrics. We talked about this off air too. Like 
all like string finders we talked about and there's Myers-Briggs. We all took the Myers-Briggs test too early on in our writing careers. Um, I use the birth order book. I don't know if you guys have ever read it or not, but it is a great book if you have children, even if you don't have children, it really helps you figure out your siblings and your relationships with them. But I use that and I, before I even start writing my character, I decide what order they are in their birth. And that really helps me sometimes to decide how they'll react to situations and what helps to cement their personality before I even start writing them. So you can use metrics like that. Yeah. Before we go on, I also just want to give a plug to people where character development is not your weak link. For me, plot is weak. Um, For me, my characters kind of come to me. I typically write a story because I have a character who I want to tell about. So from my perspective, I don't need worksheets and things like that to know my characters. I just need to spend more time with them. So that's why I like to write scenes, including my characters, and then just not include them later on. Because for example, my main character started out a really surly and grumpy guy when I wrote some sprints about him. But as I wrote more of his character, he developed over time and he did become exactly the kind of person who would do behavior someone else might not do. But because Mm -hmm. I know him, I know that's how he would react. So then you have to ask the reader to just buy in and trust you that the character is going to play out to be that kind of guy in the end. Right. Piper says, I love to write the character as I'm writing, but I need to use sheets to keep track of their information. That's a good point, too. So sometimes worksheets come in after you started writing it. So we wanted to, like, just kind of touch on what we do quickly, kind of shortly, because the reason we want to have this episode is because Tina has been utilizing a very specific type of... um, process that she does that we're very interested in. And so, Tina, I want to talk to you specifically about, um, oh, well, we didn't talk about people watching and, and getting character information for that. Well, we can talk about that maybe at the end, some other ways we can do this. But um, Tina, what is it that you, what have you been doing to develop your characters? Well, I, I, I've been specifically using the Story Genius book by Lisa Crone, C-R-O-N, and I meant to have that book here to show you, and it's in the other room. So sorry about that. Um, the link is in the description of this for everyone right. who's interested. Um, and, you know, we've talked about strengths finders before and how I'm high context. And I think then I also am a, bit, a deep thinker. And I feel like her method fits right into how my brain works. Mm. And so for me, it works really well. And so I just want to preface this by saying that this won't work for everybody. But it works really well, really, really well. It's the one thing that I've found that, like, to me is like an aha kind of thing. That's a great endorsement. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and it kind of incorporates things that all of you have already said. Um, So, I, the first, it's like a, it's like a process that she uses. And so, the first thing that you do is you, you make a thumbnail sketch of your character. Not the color of their eyes or, um, you know, their hair or that kind of, or their horoscope, like Rhonda Mm -hmm. said. Um, But it's more, um, who are they on the inside? What do they believe? What do they want? What is their deepest desire? Um, Where are they right now in their life specifically? Are they a young mother? Are they an old woman? Are they a student? So like to know where they are in the cycle of life. Um, And your goal is to find your character's inner why. So that goes right along with um, what Jen was saying about knowing what hurt your characters. Oh, yeah. Those hurts can develop your why. Like, what is their why? What is their deepest desire? Mm -hmm. So for example, in my first book, my character's deepest desire was for her mother to come back. Mm -hmm. Um, Because she felt like her mother being, and she felt like her mother being gone was her fault. And so that caused all this, like this false belief stuff. So knowing what she believed, she believed everything was her fault and her mom was gone. It was her fault. And she just wanted her mom back. And see, to know a person, a real life person, deeply enough to know that that is their biggest hurt, how well would you know that person, right? So if you can make a reader know a person that well, they're going to care about them. Right. 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 So first step, thumbnail sketch. And then once you have your thumbnail sketch and you know that you know that you know who they are and what they believe and um, what their deepest desire is, then you write 
a short paragraph about what is it that your character enters the story wanting. So the, what, what they wanted in the past may not be the same as what they want at the op on the opening scene of your story. Um, so you write, it's a sh short paragraph. Um, and she says to use the eyes wide shut test. If you cannot close your eyes and envision it as tangible, then you haven't developed it enough. This is really good too, if you're writing a series like you are, Tina, because mm -hmm. what your character wants at the beginning of book one is not going to be what she wants at the beginning of book two. Exactly. So that's really cool. All right. Awesome. Can I just ch chime in here? Because I always had a problem with what does your character want? Like from the time I was a little girl and I just want to say, go ahead and write something anyway, if you don't know, because it kept me from writing forever that I would think of a story, but I'm like, I don't know what this person wants. And it was like hard or it was like, too esoteric for me to even understand what you're talking about. Um, so if you don't get this, it doesn't mean you can't still write a story. I just kind of wanted to say that. That's all. <laughs> right. And Tina said at the beginning, of, this doesn't work for everybody. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. And in, in, because of time constraints, like I'm not, I'm kind of um, condensing all this. Sure. But it took me a while. I wrote an entire book and then started to rewrite it. And it was about halfway through before I stumbled upon Angelica's why. Right. Um, I wasn't using the story genius thing at that time. Um, and I, so I don't even know, maybe I wouldn't have found it. Maybe the process of the, the, this whole process might change that. You might say, well, I think this is it. And then as you start writing, because this, there's a lot of scenes, there's about four or five or six scenes that you actually write before your story ever starts in this process. Ah, I see. And so you might say, oh, what she really wants is a puppy. Nice. Okay. And then by the end of the process, you might like know what she really wants is somebody to love her for her. And that's why mm. she wants a puppy. Super helpful. See, that helps me to keep going anyway, even if I'm not sure I know the why. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, um, then the next thing is just like to write down some ideas. This goes along with what Jennifer say, what was saying with the what if questions. Mm -hmm. Um, but why does she want it? So that would have taken me from she wants a puppy to she wants somebody to accept her for who she was. And, and you know, let's start writing. Just start writing all these ideas. Mm -hmm. Why is it that she wants a puppy? Mm -hmm. um, she wants, she's scared to go running in the woods by herself, you know, like whatever. Just write them. And, and, and if you write enough of them, the answer will come to you. Mm. Like you'll just say, ah, this is the one. And also you need to define your character's misbelief almost everybody has a misbelief and if you if your character can have a strong misbelief coming into the story that will really connect your readers to them so my angelica's character the character of angelica's misbelief was that because she stole her mom's um lucky eagle necklace that she said keeps her from getting lost that's why her mother ne went away and never came back I think and, I get where I am. I don't mean to seem contrary, but I think what's where my mental block is, is discovery versus decision. Like, are you deciding Reese's birthday is October 8th or are you discovering? Re you know what I'm saying? And I think that's where my brain ends up putting a, a block to you. So I apologize. I just wanted to point that out because I think that that's maybe a lot of people struggle with that. So mm -hmm. anyway, keep going because it's really good information. If for right. me, I, I also learn a lot from discovery. And so I had just put down several ideas. Yes. Okay. I, um, me too. I just do it differently. Like I do it before I'm writing that all have my discovery all happens as I'm like, right. I call it pl plotting I'm planning, but like really it's, it's discovery at a different mm -hmm. point. Yeah. Good Piper point, Jen. Piper says she loves that explanation because she's with you, Jamie. Some of those ideas are too esoteric for her to initially grasp. So yeah. All right, great. And since I'm a deep thinker, a lot of the writing that I do has already been written in my mind. And so a lot of my discovery happens in my daydreaming or my imagining. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll imagine a scene and then I'll reject it and I'll imagine another scene and I'll reject it and then I'll keep this one and then I'll write it. So that's mm -hmm. kind of how my writing process works, which is why this kind of works for me. So 
Now we're going to start writing scenes. The next one is to write an origin scene. That's what it's called. That's the moment your character's misbelief took root. If you don't want to call it a misbelief, but she calls it a misbelief in her book, but it could very well be that pain point Jennifer was talking about. Right. What was it that caused their deep pain? Um, right. Or what was it that birthed this desire that they have that's going to be what I call the third rail of the book? Mm -hmm. So. The origin scene is that moment, what happened in that moment to create that pain, that desire, or that misbelief. And then you write three more scenes after that. And each of those scenes is a moment in their life, a specific circumstance that cemented that false belief or their, um, like rooted their pain deeper. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm okay, I believe that my mom's gone because it's my fault. And then a year, two years later, something else happens that just cements that belief and makes it deeper and makes me believe it more. And so you write three scenes that all happen before your story starts. Now, this might sound like a lot of work, but if you're doing word sprints every day with Jen, that's one, not even a day's worth of work to go through and write three scenes. Like it's a, you know, a 25 minute sprint. You can do this, guys. Like I used to hear advice like this and say, who wants to write a bunch of stuff? No one's going to read. But it really doesn't take you that long. It does not take that long to hammer out some of these things that Tina's talking about. So I just want to throw that out there. Plus, there's no guarantee that you won't use it, right? As, as you're Truth. talking, Truth. I'm thinking right now about the story that I'm outlining <clears throat> and that I've started writing, The Widows of the West, book one. I know his pain point. I know like where his misbelief started, and it was a broken heart back before. And then as you're saying three more scenes, I'm like, I don't know if I have those. And also, I'm like, I have one. Wow. Like when he first met this woman and then realized she was married to someone else. And then he's like, just cemented that. He's not meant to be married, you know, like, mm. so, so like, like I'm going to use one, I, I could write them all and I might actually be able to use them as flashbacks or use them. Like you just don't know, but it, right. regardless it, or not, it cements the character in your mind. So as you're writing it, it's going to be a deeper, better story. Right. Um, <clears throat> the, the rest like this, that's pretty much the character development part that's in her book. And I want to say, I, I highly mm -hmm. recommend her book, but my philosophy for anything that I do, in, like cooking, I always follow the recipe exactly the first time I make something. And then like the next time I, I personalize it. Right. Like, okay, I didn't like this ingredient, but I'm going to use this instead. And so um, I don't- Hyper I also suggested make... we could use it in our newsletter too. So yeah. Oh yeah. Ways. You always need stuff to go on your newsletter. I don't, I didn't necessarily write three turning point scenes for all of my characters. Uh, I only wrote one for Thomas, which I did put in my newsletter. Um, and for Angelica, I already had all the stuff from my first book. So I didn't really need to write all those belief scenes for her core misbelief that then, but she still had this, she still goes into book two with a misbelief. Right. So, so every book is going to have a new one, right? It, so it's, it's kind of the old misbelief tweaked, like twisted, because gotcha. there's just information she didn't know mm -hmm. by the end of book one that is going to completely change her perspective on what happened in book one. And I think that if you're writing a series that this is really good information, because I think it is important because you might get into the next series and, and uh, next story of the series i'm like well i already figured out this character and then they're just there and they become in that book become a flat character right you got to make sure that it's not a flat character because you have to give them a new misbelief because let's be honest we all have plenty of misbeliefs and we all have like plenty of hurts and they're you know in our real lives so you just got to make the characters more real by showing that so good right. stuff. so that is pretty much the um the process um Okay, well, can I go back and address people watching then? Because that was on the outline and I kind of skipped right. right over. Did you want to go back too. to that, Jen? I do, because I think that the process is important, but like then you also got to start somewhere, right? So even before that, like if you're still just trying to figure out characters, like where do we find our characters before we even get to the point where we have to get deep into them, like Tina was talking? So go ahead, Jamie. 
Well, I just wanted to say beyond people watching is what I would call it. And here's what I mean. The next time you're forced to go to an event that you're just like, why do I have to go to this event? Make it your mission to find somebody who has nobody to talk to and start letting them tell you everything about their life. If you can find that one person who feels like nobody ever wants to hear about me, you'll learn so much about people in general and human nature, and you'll probably get an insight onto a character that's nothing like any other person in your real life because it's a total stranger. And if you give people the opportunity, they will unload on you. I had people at the barn sale telling me about their their kids chemo or like whatever. And just because you got to know this person doesn't have anybody else that they feel like is a kind listening soul who will bear their burden for them. And that helps you understand human nature and it will help you write better characters and it will help you just be a better witness actually. And can I recommend that you start with your own elderly family members? And get their stories written down for yeah, the same for reason. sure. For sure. And if you're a total introvert, there are plenty of YouTube videos that people are now taking of their real lives that are, they're just some really quirky, interesting people out there. And for sure, you guys know that I use relatives like to inspire characters in my books. And so I think that's really important too, to do that. So, all right, great. Anything else to say on the topic of uh, developing your characters? I just like to say that, um, whether you use Lisa Crone's exact way of doing it, I find that writing the character helps me to know the character. And so if, even if you just write some scenes about your character that you, and with the intention of, with not with the intention of using it, but with the idea that you might use all of it or bits and pieces of it in the actual book. I mean, Agreed. you can make your character be the star of every single one of your 30 days to a writing sprint habit. When yeah. you pick up the Christian Indie Writers <laughs> workbook, 30 days, use your use these sprint prompts and write a story based on these prompts about your character. Then you will know your character a whole lot better at the end of those 30 days. It's only 10 bucks and we don't make any money off of it. We're just able to do this podcast because y'all are so sweet to buy a book. Exactly. Great promotion, Jamie. Thanks. So whether or not you use the story genius or you use Dee Dee Bowman's book or whatever, we just encourage you to go deeper with your characters. Stop and spend some time getting to know them. And it's only going to improve your writing. Mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So this is a point in our podcast where we move into the feeding of the backs, Yay. which is our feedback time What's our favorite part. It's actually, I think it's our husband's all favorite part. I think it's everybody that watches it's the favorite part, but what's is what, this is what we do. So before the podcast every week, we, you'll see it in our social media. We put out a prompt and when we put that out, we're writing it too. We set a timer for 15 minutes. We write for 15 minutes and then we don't edit it. We don't look at it again. We just read them live here on the podcast, the same prompt at the same time. And if you guys don't believe us, seriously, you can watch Jamie do it on her Facebook page. She actually goes on and, and writes live where you can watch her do it. So we, we don't edit this. We don't plan this ahead. We just do it. And then we share it. So it's kind of, yeah. at first it was scary when we started doing this. Now it's like, whatever, here's my, here's my mess. Let's see what you think. So, Jamie, I'm going to start with you. I oh, are you? Your, I am. <laughs> I want you to share what the prompt was, and I want to hear your mess. Okay. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to frantically open. Um, the prompt was five random words, which we all hated and picked on Tina for. Um, yes. And they were, because she goes to, like, a random word generator thingy. I literally go to randomwordgenerator.com. Yes. But we love to give Ron, or Tina a hard time. Um, the words this time were paragraph contradiction, serial, dynamic, expectation, and the serial is the one with the C like Wheaties, okay? Um, and here we go. <clears throat> a collective sigh rose up from the students as the teacher turned and printed a long homework assignment on the board. Sally snapped her gum. I wish you wouldn't do that, Mary said, rolling her eyes and checking to see if Mrs. Markham had put quotation marks at the beginning of the prompt or not. It made a difference. If Mrs. Markham put in the, it in quotes, it was meant to be used in the story. At least one paragraph, Mary tapped her chin with her pencil. Does that mean three sentences minimum? Or do you think I could get away with one big old sentence adorned with semicolons and em dashes? 
<laughs> Are you serious right now? Sally snapped her gum again and tapped her pencil on her bare desktop. You really plan on writing that stupid thing? She sneered in the direction of the fastidious teacher who was stacking her papers in preparation for the long weekend ahead. You know I have to live up to a certain expectation. It says I murmured because I switched person, but it's Mary murmured. Sally sighed. She knew what it was like in my house or Mary's house. Same thing, I guess. At her <laughs> house, we got the sugar cereal and even Pop-Tarts for breakfast if we wanted. Not at Sally's house. Her mom just left a 20 on the counter, asked her to make sure she didn't go hungry every morning. I guess you get what I meant there. Sometimes Mary longed to be Sally. You're a walking contradiction, she muttered back, slapping a rhythm on the pine Mary knew would come out later when she strummed her guitar and Mary cruised through her tiger beat. You hit the books like crazy, but seems like you want to party all the time. I can't figure it out. Got to get that white picket fence, you know. It's what's expected. The bell rang and the girls scuffled down the hall to Sally's locker, which was too skinny to house her guitar in spite of what the sitcoms we saw's kids had promised. Sally had worn out her gum, I guess, because she stuck it to the inside of her locker. You need anything out of there? She asked. Nah, but let me toss this in. I lobbed the heavy science tome into the heap of crumpled papers and brown lunch sacks oozing with rotten fruit that had collected in the bottom of this communal cesspool. Three of us shared this particular locker and the others conveniently located, oh, and the others conveniently located in the building separate pods. I really have a dynamic expectation for that song you're going to write later, Sally, Mary said. I had a really high expectation when the author wrote the first paragraph, Sally replied. Let's hope it's not disappointing for us both. <laughs> <laughs> oh so horrible i was like put me out of my misery now i hate this i hate this i hate but anyway i got through it and i switched person and i tried to go back and fix it but i obviously missed some of the eyes <laughs> that's awesome I, I loved it my favorite part oh. the tiger beat okay. yes tiger beat I, when i go to a state sale and they've got a pile of tiger beats there i'm like oh heaven you got i've never it. seen a, a pile of tiger beats people have kept them seriously <laughs> well a pile is like three <laughs> right. For those of you that are either too young or too old to understand our obsession over this comment is Tiger Beat was a magazine when we were kids. I don't think it's around anymore. And it's it was Twitter, first a teenager. It's Twitter you can hold in your hand. <laughs> or yeah, Instagram, it was, yep. It was all propaganda. Like yeah. when I look back, it's like there's no way that Donnie Wahlberg was actually saying that. It was his publicist <laughs> saying that he was saying that. Yeah. Like uh, Sean Austin was not like sharing really the well. kind of girl I like. That's yeah. what it was. The kind, yeah. of girl, the kind of girl Sean Austin's looking for. No, it was I'm like really Cosmo, the Cosmo magazine for teenagers yeah. and kids about just like, warming you up, warming yeah. up for it, right? Yep. And it would have fold out like posters nothing inappropriate nope. don't, don't even go we're not talking those guys but it would be like seriously like michael jackson you can mm -hmm. put on your wall like with Vince a staple Neal. and his belly button kind of yeah a thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah i had those posters of vince neal all over i had this loft in my room and i wasn't allowed to put posters on my actual walls but like the walls of that thing were They're covered awesome. with hairband <laughs> Shell says funny stuff, Jamie. Aww, thanks. Uh, she says Corey Tiger Bee had Corey oh, Hayes. Yes, of course. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. The Corey's. Oh, yeah. The Corey's. And then um, Gigi says, love your characters. Snapping the gum felt like those were characters I could know. Oh, Except for thanks. we weren't allowed to chew gum in school. I don't know what kind <laughs> of like rough neck, ruffian kind of school you got to go to. Well, but... the teacher's afraid of Sally, so she does what she wants. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Teresa said she bought those magazines too. Yep, yep, yep. yeah. We all did. Yeah. All right, awesome. I loved it. All right, Rhonda, how about you? Are you ready to share yours? Sure. Let me get it up. Okay. The day was a contradiction in every way. From the protected spot by the window in the kitchen, it was a sunny, cloudless day. But as she drew the shawl around her shoulders, last year's gift, the one her daughters made for her out of the yarn they spun out of their lap dog's fur, she knew that was a deceitful sight. This time of year, bluebird skies meant cold temperatures. Mm. Mommy, come to the table, the precious little one asked again, this time pulling on the old woman's hand. Coming, sweetie, she said. These birthday breakfasts were such a sweet thought, but she was relieved they were serving her at the table today instead of bed. No mushy cereal to wash out of her sheets today, thankfully. <laughs> She turned from the window and kept her head turned as she passed the kitchen on her way to the table. No reason to spoil her birthday breakfast by seeing the disaster she was sure was waiting for on every surface of that room. 
-hmm. but she couldn't resist stealing a glance. Her expectations were accurate. <laughs> Turning toward the dining room, the sight of it was a contradiction to the last room. The girls had brought out her favorite set of her aunt's china and set proper mm -hmm. places for each of them at the table, full silverware settings, including those beautifully embroidered cloth napkins she had just unearthed from the basement. Jen's <laughs> expectations were <laughs> the end. Yay! <laughs> I love, I love how you ended about the that old on. woman comment. <laughs> the old woman can. I wasn't sure if I if I spent enough time on that or not. <laughs> no, I, I love how you ended that on expectations and then didn't give us. Uh, yeah, um, Rhonda, you know, know me, Tina. I know it's supposed to be positive only, but you could have used it the source like Crone. Maybe oh. could have been. <laughs> in there. You're brilliant. Withered, her withered hand. <laughs> <laughs> like oh, her snapping bones, cracking oh, bones, but decrepit walk say, down the hall. <laughs> <laughs> the bluebird skies, though, legit yeah. beautiful. That oh, was a legit you. beautiful description. Well, thank because you. It's gorgeous out right now on my birthday, um, but it's I'm steaming because it's I'm super a, cold. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Poor Jen. It's is your birthday cold. always cold in Michigan or just sometimes? Uh, it's just sometimes, but it has snowed on my birthday before. Like, oh. I know when I went to college, people were like, no, it wouldn't in, in May. Oh, yeah. Oh. It has snowed on my birthday before, so I believe it. In in the winter in Alaska, if the sun is out, it's actually colder mm. because wow. you don't have the clouds, the blanket cover holding the heat from the earth down, and it all just because heat rises, it just all dissipates mm. into the atmosphere. Oh wow! Gigi says that was awesome, Rhonda. Thank you, Gigi. It was awesome, Rhonda. Really, really Thank good. Thank you. And fun. It was both. Oh, I didn't like it. <laughs> you know those crotchety old ladies are so yeah so you, notice that, R -O -N -E. and, yeah. you notice i use shawl instead of like cowl neck uh, did you say the shawl was was woven from, from the dog lap. fur yeah the girls had spun your lap dog's fur i thought you were trying to be like working in something from one of your ancestors i'm like i'm gonna have to ask Rhonda about this particular ancestor because oh. i know you had one that like collected wool from the fence or something yeah like that. Yeah, yeah yeah my mm -hmm. great grandma that story yeah that's hilarious all right well i will go next um <laughs> i did not um uh, and any of you ladies to my mind to the day. So, just so oh, I'm know, so was, disappointed. I know. I'm grateful. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <clears throat> and I used all the words. I didn't think I was going to. I purposely, I really thought I'm never using cereal, but I did. So, <clears throat> Have you seen Ruth's proposal for the new department? It's dynamic. The strength it took to keep her eyes steady would equal any bodybuilders because Miley's eyes had a mind of their own when it came to rolling. And the urge to do so was so strong. Miley was certain she was pulling some sort of internal eye muscle, keeping them from doing so. <laughs> no, sir. I haven't heard anything about it. She averted her unruly eyes only to avert her gaze to a splotch of dried cereal on her navy skirt. She scratched at the remnants of the baby's breakfast and gathered her wits. Is it your expectation that her plan will be one, the one you choose? That depends. The hair on the back of Miley's neck stood on end at the sound of the masculine voice coming from the doorway behind her. Stephen Blake casually strode through Mr. Rumsfield's office, stepping behind the desk. He slapped his hand on the elder man's shoulder. Depends, Mr. Rumsfield said curiously, looking up at his younger partner. Stephen nodded and answered Rumsfield, but his eyes settled on Miley. Yes, on what Miss Marks here will be presenting. Miley's blood ran cold. She did have a proposal since every employee had been asked to write one, but hers was a mere paragraph. After hearing Mr. Rumsfield's glow about Ruth's, I'm not sure mine will meet your expectation, Mr. Blake. Stephen Blake's lip curled into a slight smile, making Miley feel both comfortable and danger at all. What? Feel both comfort and danger all the same time. Yep. Miley Mark's not meeting my expectation. Now that's an impossible contradiction. That's all I got. Miley Marks is a great name. You complimented mine last week, but that's a good one. Is that one you had before? Or no. How do you spell the last name? M-A-R-K-S. Got it. Didn't know if it was an X. No. <laughs> oh. Any relation? <laughs> what kind of book is this? <laughs> no. I really uh, love the comfort and danger at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I and felt that before about some people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, did you use all the words? I thought that I missed one, but I it, I could have just missed it. But you got I them all? I got them all. I got Ooh, paragraph, 
contradiction, dynamic, expectation, and serial. I got them all. Yep. Wow. Awesome. Good job. That's tricky to do with such disparate words and to still make a story that sounds that good. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. We got some like um, chat coming in from the previous uh, sprints. Sweet scene. I think that was for you, Rhonda. Um, <laughs> Pioneers in Petticoats with author Lee Baniki um, says, I love the gum, gum snapping too, Jamie. So. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Oh, Shell says, good tension building, Jen. Oh, thank Not you. I appreciate sure. it. Gigi, oh, Jennifer, love the part about comparing the eye rolling to bodybuilding. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. It's a struggle. We all know. <laughs> it can be painful sometimes. I have really strong eye muscles. <laughs> <laughs> so when you see me do this, because I'm like, anybody with hard. teenagers is like, they can bench press. Great. <laughs> they, don't try to, eyes. they don't try to hold them steady. They, like, they have, they just let it go. <laughs> All right, Tina, we say the best for last. You ready? Yeah, I just want to say that I had to, I was done with my scene and I had a little time left and I'd only used two of the words. So I had to go back and add a sentence in there. So I'm going to see if you can spot it. Okay. <laughs> uh, three of the point. words are on one sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Have you finished that paragraph yet? Marie asked Jessica. I can't. I can't write it. My hand won't think of any ideas. Jessica threw her hands in the air with an overly dramatic flare, causing her pencil to fly across the room and land precariously close to baby Jack, who was playing with blocks on the rug. Marie momentarily thought about letting Baby Jack play with the pencil if it would make him stop banging blocks onto the metal pot she decided to just give him to keep him from crawling into her kitchen cabinets. Mm -hmm. She prudently reached it and picked it up just before Jack got to it. He moved from his knees to his butt, waiting to see if she was looking, and began to wail. Where the heck had she put her noise-canceling headphones anyway? She handed Jack his plastic cup full of round oat cereal, which immediately stopped the ear-splitting sound emanating from his mouth. Put your writing up and take a break, Marie said to Jessica. Find a book to read. Maybe you'll be inspired. I don't want to read. I want to paint. Marie looked over at the corner at the painting center and sighed. She didn't have the energy for painting today. Yesterday, she'd just thrown a drop cloth over the easel instead of cleaning it up, and she preferred to pretend it didn't exist. <laughs> Perhaps you could draw instead, Marie suggested. Draw a picture of what you want to happen in your paragraph. But Marie turned the invisible ignore button in her brain on and went into the kitchen. Her oldest baby, Johnny, was standing in front of the refrigerator with the door open, Aww. typing into his phone. <laughs> Get what you need and shut the door, Marie said for the hundred thousandth time in her life. It came out sounding monotone and bored. There's nothing to eat, Kevin said, never taking his eyes from his phone. That was it. Marie grabbed the phone from Kevin's hand and threw it hard into the sink uh -oh. filled with sudsy water and dirty breakfast dishes. Get something to eat or go hungry, she shouted. Mm -hmm. Kevin said some things he hadn't been taught at home before screaming back, I hate you. You are the worst mom ever. Marie closed her eyes and listened to the footsteps pounding up the stairs and down the hall, followed by the slamming of a door. She heard the door open again, and it slammed even harder the second time. <laughs> if she could find that guy from the conference who kept saying that homeschooling was the dynamic choice, the expectation was greatness, she would punch him for the contradiction between that and reality. She reached into the sink and pulled the phone out grabbing the brand new bag of rice she'd bought for tonight's dinner. I should start a drama troupe, she said out loud. <laughs> I found it. I found the sentence. <laughs> Tina, I think that the title of this story should be How to Lose Your Bedroom Doy. <laughs> Door. Yeah. Door, yeah. <laughs> My kids have like... actually done that before. Like They were not sad. At, I don't remember which one because I have four of them. But whoever it was was not satisfied with the first slam. <laughs> they opened their door and slammed it again. <laughs> was any of this based on the grandmother granddaughter relationship of Tina and Athena? No, like there's oh. this is separately like scenes from my, when I was raising my kids. <laughs> yeah, like, but it didn't all happen on one day, and I only homeschooled one of them. But <laughs> that's awesome. It's a mom life slice, that's for sure. So you actually threw the phone into the water? Uh, no, I didn't actually okay. do that. But I would have <laughs> if I had thought of it. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> Piper says, oh, I feel this story so much, Tina. Gigi says, poor Jessica, my hand can't think of any yes. ideas. <laughs> I can very cute. Yes. That was very mm -hmm. cute. Love, love, love that part. Piper also says the people at the gas station liked the bit about <laughs> Tiger Beats earlier. Were you playing it where they could hear? That's hilarious. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> glad, glad we can. Uh... Oh, man. Sorry, somebody's calling me in Messenger. You, you can't hear that, right? I can't <laughs> no. know how to stop it. No, we just could see you go, what? <laughs> It's very strange. Yeah, my All son right. James once told me he couldn't write the sentences I had assigned him as a punishment because his hand was broken because every time he picked up his pencil, it hurt. Mm -hmm. wow. <laughs> so that was the inspiration for <laughs> Jessica's hand not being able to think of anything to write. That is super cute. Oh, I loved it. Loved everything about it, Tina. Thanks. All right, ladies, it's time for us to move into our final part of our episode, which we call our what's next. So if you're here with us today in the chat, we'd love to know what's next for you in your career as well. But <coughs> excuse me, I keep allergies. <laughs> um, so we'd this is where we kind of like our exhibit our public accountability. We tell what we were doing in our career and what is going to be happening next between now and the next podcast. So Rhonda, let's go ahead and start with you. What is next for you? Okay. Um, the most immediate thing I'll be doing next is looking up Pioneers in Petticoats with author Leah Beninke and see what that's all about. Because yeah, I'm she's totally new. Directed now. Yeah. Welcome um, to the podcast, Leah. Yes. And the next thing will be editing and social media. Those are my two focuses for every minute of the day next week. All right. Awesome. What about you, Jamie? What do you have going on? Um, I'm actually glad Rhonda's was kind of short because I'm going to kind of blah, blah, blah. I have a newsletter and the newsletter is going to go out again on Monday. So <clears throat> what's interesting is I've noticed that the same hundred or so people are opening and the rest of the people are just languishing over there. Never even opened a single email that I sent them. So I decided to do an experiment this morning and I sent out an email with only two links in it, a link to my free book that they should have got because they signed up and an unsigned subscribe link because you have to have that in there wondering if I'm just going to everybody's spam folder or what and I just wanted to um, say that that's kind of what's going on with me as a writer if people care to know so so far of the people who never ever ever have opened anything that I've ever sent them um, five have actually opened this one which makes me really happy and two people actually finally got their free in book or, or book and one person is unsubscribed which means i am doing exactly what i want to do which is organically pruning my subscriber list because mm -hmm. the more subscribers you have the sooner you have to start paying for your email list and i figured why not purge them out when I'm still fresh, so I can start with a pretty clear list of people who want my stuff. Plus, I want people opening my newsletter. I put a lot of hard work into it, and it's like 200 or so people who just keep it goes to their spam filter maybe. So in my email, I said, please add connect at writingshorts.net to your safe list so you will get my newsletter. If you haven't signed up, you can become a subscriber at www.writingshorts.net, and you can get a free short story when you subscribe. Awesome. That sounds Excellent. really great. <clears throat> okay. Piper says her what's next. I'm behind in on words this week. So I need to get them today. All busy, right. Busy. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 Teresa says what's next working on a rough draft of a short story reader magnet and planning out what revisions need to be made on my work in progress. Mm. So th I just mm -hmm. want to stop real quick and say what a great community we have here in our mm -hmm. chat and just amongst all the, the people that follow us and, and, and support each other because Teresa actually got this idea for this reader magnet that she's going to do from Piper. And <gasps> um, yeah, in so Teresa also does, I do um, writing sprints twice a week. Teresa does productivity sprints before me. Mm -hmm. um, Monday through Friday, I believe she does it um, for four days a week, five days a week. And uh, Piper, some of our, well, there's crossover, like people have been going back and forth to them. And Piper gave her this idea. And I just think it's super great how we help each other in this community. So if you're new I here, agree. jump in and get to know these people because they're all really great. Yeah. And if you've been lurking and only a listener, join in the chat because this is actually a writing community that is encouraging and supportive. Um, I've never seen anybody be nasty. Jump in and be a part of the discussion. Shell says, what's next? Pretty close to finishing my short story. Planning to finish this weekend and have it proofread during the week. Oh, that is yay. Exciting. 
So my what's next is book three comes out on Thursday. So, so exciting! It's going to be a crazy week. I have um, a book launch party that I really haven't planned much. I got to start promoting that. But that's going to be on Thursday. I'm going to have like a little secret kind of book club with my advanced readers. So I need to figure that out. I guess I probably should have like figured that out before now, like when we're doing it. But I, I've got one of two times. I might send out a, a newsletter today to them to see when would work best for them. But that's going to be more of a, um, I'm going to do it different. I think I'm going to do it like a Zoom. They can have their cameras off if they want or whatever, but where they can actually talk to me and we can mm. talk about the book. So I'm excited about that, but I'm super nervous about that too, because I've never done anything like that. So I'll let you know how that goes. But yeah, just all kinds of like, I've got my promos all paid for and lined up. Um, so we'll see. So um, Jen, you, you don't just have to come back and report. We want to like be there. How do we come to your launch oh. party? Are we allowed to come to it? <laughs> yes. The launch party. If you're not on my dance team, you can't come to that one. But the launch party, yes, it'll be on my Facebook page. So if you don't already follow me on Facebook, go to Facebook and it's uh, facebook.com forward slash Jennifer Carl Tong author. And you can find me there. So nice. I just have to say, Jennifer, I when I was doing the newsletter and I um, wanted to make sure I had the right link for your book promo uh, that's in the newsletter. Oh, I mm -hmm. love that graphic that you have with your new book on there. Mm -hmm. It is just so beautiful. Mm -hmm. Which the cover or the graphic I made like for a promo. Like it's like your cover. banner on the top yeah. of your website. Oh, all oh, the you. trees and everything. Yeah, Jeez, it's right. just yeah. really beautiful. It just like I I was blown away. I was just like, oh Aww. my gosh, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's breathtaking. Aww. Thank you. Really I really is. appreciate that. I hope that people find the inside as beautiful as a, you know, and Go if to early Jennifer readers Carl Tong and check it out, everybody. JenniferCarlTong.com. Yeah. JenniferCarlTong.com. Uh, spelled like you can see it right, right there. That's how you spell it with no <laughs> hyphen in the website. But um, there, if the early readers responses are any indication, this is actually, people are going to enjoy this more than the first two. Mm -hmm. I, I actually got an email within a day of releasing to my, she read it in a day. I had one of my early readers write me and she said, Jen, this is, this is possibly the best one yet. And that's saying a lot. Okay. So wait now, if you listen though, Jennifer's giveaway, Jennifer's giving away three signed copies of this Oh book. yeah. I forgot. So yeah. That so ends. listen, like if you listen, it, the best part I'm is ready. if you enter that giveaway, Goodreads will tell you when the book is actually on sale. So if you don't win the giveaway, you won't miss getting Jen's book when it's actually available because you can't buy it yet. So go enter the giveaway and then Goodreads will remind you to buy it on when it's ready, right, Jen? Like, that's what I like about the giveaway. Right. It benefits the reader. And technically, I have it on pre-order everywhere, so you can. Go oh, good. Pre-order it. Pre -order it. But yes, go to goodreads.com. Look me up. Again, just type in my name as you see it there and go to a calling for Phoebe. And I'm this, the, the, uh, what is it? The promotion, the giveaway ends on the 11th. So as long as you get entered by the 11th, then if you win, awesome, you get a signed copy from me, a signed physical paperback copy from me. Nope. If you, if you don't win, then you'll, you, yes, you'll get a, an update on what, but also I'm releasing the book at a reduced price. It is mm. only giving me 99 cents on this book. It's a, the biggest one I've ever written and it will be eventually 4 99. But if you sign up now, if you go and pre-order or you order it within the first five days, you can get it for 99 cents. The so e it really e is a deal. The ebook, the mm. ebook. <laughs> yes. You can't get the physical. I would go broke. I would go broke. Um, okay. So let's look in. Let's see. Uh, let's go back to our chat real quick. For serious, Piper has been a major blessing to me. She is to me too. Especially this week. I would never have met her without all of you. And all of you bless and encourage me so much on this Aww, journey. Thanks, Teresa. Teresa, you're a blessing to us as well. And Teresa, uh, Piper gives a heart. Um, Leah says, I'm new, trying to branch into YouTube. My Facebook group is great, but moving into new territory. Fine. And Tina, Teresa sent you a message. So I'm not going to throw that up. I there, saw but. that. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to look for it today, Teresa. All right. Teresa. So Tina, you're last. You're the last one. So let's hear what you got going on. I got nine scenes I need to write. Woo. And I need to get them done. Mm -hmm. um, I want to just write all weekend, but I have my granddaughter for half of it. So we'll see what happens. Um, but hopefully I can come back next week and tell you it's done. That's wow. so exciting. So, so exciting. Getting yeah. close. Mm -hmm. Very, very close. 
Now think, it took you the 10 years to write the first one. And how yeah. long have you been working on this one? A few months. <laughs> That's and amazing. I, the problem is, too, I keep adding scenes as I'm going, which isn't a bad thing. Like, I have scene 34, and then I kept having ideas as I was going. So, like, I actually have scene 34.1, scene 34.2, because I had already <laughs> developed scene 35. So, I just keep, like... Right. So that's been happening too. You can fix so. all that later, right? Yeah. I do the same thing. If you see my, which I meant to bring it down here because I have a bunch of them done up. Um, my isolation booth for my new series that I'm doing, like I do it for 32 chapters. Are my books all 32 chapters? No, some are less, some are more, but like I do it that way and you just kind of go in that direction. You can always change the chapter numbers later. So mm -hmm. that's exciting, Tina. I'm very that, excited. So like, like what's nine, what I'm trying to say is what's nine scenes today might not be nine. It might be 12. It might be <laughs> right. <laughs> Because I, I just keep you. coming up with new ideas as I'm writing. So that's awesome. One last what's next. Uh, Leah says that finish her work in progress. Her 11th novel, start filming her history videos for YouTube, sharing excerpts from Pioneer Diaries. Very, very exciting. That's going to be right, fun. Lisa. We have a lot of historical fiction fans in our chat. I bet you a lot of people are going to head over there to see what that's all about. I will be contacting her this week. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, ladies, this has been fun. And thank you everyone for joining us today. But until next week, this concludes the Christian Indie Writers Podcast. So until next podcast, may your pen be prolific, may your deadlines be met, and may all of your words honor Christ. Bye now. Bye. <laughs>